Hi, my name's Ollie, and I'm here from Michael Page. Michael Page is a large recruitment business, and we're here to support anyone back into work, no matter your background. Having lived experience of disability myself allows me to really understand the skill sets that the disabled community has and what they can really bring to businesses. I myself, having a full-time disability and being a wheelchair user, understand the challenges that come with living in a world that isn't adapted to my needs. I have to be incredibly resourceful. I have to be able to manage my time incredibly well. I have to be resilient and I have to be able to communicate very well to everyone. And these are all skills that every business is crying out for. When I sustained my injury and became disabled, I was really fearful about taking that, that step back into work. I myself had a very physical job before I was injured and I couldn't imagine what it would be like going to work as a full-time wheelchair user and I had a perception that I would just be sat behind a computer all day which is not what I wanted to do. However, the more I, the more I experienced and the more I got out there and, and looked, I came to realise that there were actually so many other opportunities that were open to me that didn't involve sitting behind a computer every day and crunching spreadsheets, which for me is not what I wanted to do. I actually came to realise that actually working in an office environment, working in a, in, a, in a corporate business, actually has so many other opportunities out there that really fit the skill sets that I have, um, and especially the skill sets that I've actually developed since sustaining my injury and becoming disabled. Working for a recruitment business and having a disability myself, I'm incredibly passionate about supporting others with a disability into employment. Very regularly when I speak to people who are, who are at that first point in their journey of going back into work, there are a couple of common questions that people have. And often there's a real fear about when to declare your disability to a future employer. I always say this is down to your personal choice. At the end of the day, you need to make a judgment call of when is best to tell that employer. Personally, I would always declare my disability as early on in the process as possible. This is beneficial on, on two sides of the coin. It allows you to be, be confident and not feel like you're, you're holding anything back, which can always make you nervous in any, any conversations that you have with them. It also allows the, the potential future employer to support you through that process and also demonstrate how they're going to be able to support you going forward as, as, as your career develops with them. When you're looking to get back into employment, a common phrase that you're going to hear is reasonable adjustments. Now, what is a reasonable adjustment? A reasonable adjustment is a process that is put in place to give you a level playing field to get back into employment. Employers won't always know what you need to be able to perform your job at your best. For me, if I were to meet a potential employer, it's very obvious that I need step-free access to a building. However, not all disabilities are visible. The majority of disabilities are hidden. So please take some time to think about what you need to be able to perform at your best. Some of these reasonable adjustments may not be obvious. For example, many people are impacted by fatigue. A easy request when you are impacted by fatigue would be requesting a flexible work week. Please don't be afraid of requesting reasonable adjustments. At the end of the day, employers want to set you up to be able to perform at your best. Diversity and inclusion is becoming a real business objective for companies nowadays. Its main aim is to enable everyone to succeed at work, no matter who you are, what your background, whether you have a disability or not. Lots of large businesses, for example, will have internal groups bringing together people with a disability to talk about the potential challenges, but more importantly, the, the changes that can be put in place to enable everyone to be able to perform at their best. To find out more about reasonable adjustments or access any funding to support you, please look into the Government Access to Work Scheme. This is a great resource for both you and employers. Everyone's journey back into work is very individual. It could be like me, where you have to find a whole new career, or you could return to your current employer. For those of you looking to go back to work at your current employer, you're still eligible to reasonable adjustments in the Access to Work Scheme. What I would suggest is keeping communication and dialogue open with your employer and talk from both sides about what you both need to be able to make this a success for everyone going forward. 
If, like me, you're looking at changing your whole career, the interview process can be really scary. Putting yourself back out there after sustaining an injury is very intimidating, and often you feel like you're going to be judged differently to the way you were previously. Please remember this isn't the case. The interview process is a two-way street. First of all, it's an opportunity for the employer to find out about who you are. They want to get to know you, they don't want to catch you out. And more importantly, it's an opportunity for you to get to know the business and decide whether you can have a happy and successful career there. To help you prepare for the interview process, there are lots of different associations, charities, and also recruitment businesses that would be more than happy to support you and give you some tips and advice. These same organisations will also be able to help you prepare your CV if you need that support. When recovering from a spinal cord injury, it can take a lot of time. You can spend a lot of time in rehab, and there's also a period of adjustment when you move home. This can lead to a gap in your CV, and often it can be very intimidating about how do you, how do you address this gap. I always think it's really important to be honest and upfront, and actually take a moment to think about everything that you learnt in, in your rehab. It's a time that you really develop resilience. You had to improve your communication. Likely, you got better at teamwork as well because you were having to go through this traumatic time with everyone else. So think about those, those real qualities that businesses look for that you've developed through that time in rehabilitation. I know how scary the process of getting back into work can be, but I really want you to remember that there is this amazing reward at the end of having a job that you really enjoy. And there's so much more to employment than, than is often thought about. It's often the, the, the second or third question that someone will ask you when you first meet them. It's a place where so many people develop friendships and relationships. It gives you that financial independence, and more importantly, it gives you a purpose, a reason to get up in the morning. Going back into the world of employment can be a real opportunity for you to regain your independence. Thanks for your time today. My name's Ollie Thorne and I'm from Michael Page and good luck with your journey into employment.